Hi everyone. So one of the commandments that the Lord God gave us and one of the commandments he had given the Israelites in the Old Testament was to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And in the New Testament, Jesus re-emphasizes the need for us as Christians to love him. And why it's so important is because when you truly love the Lord, doing his commandments, obeying him, is not going to become a burden. But when you do not love the Lord, obeying Jesus is going to be a burden because your allegiance, you know, your heart belongs to the world, but you are trying to obey Jesus. And so it's going to be uh, burdensome for you to obey him. But when you come to a point where Jesus really becomes important to you, like for real, not just something that you say, and you truly love the Lord, then it's going to be easy for you to obey. So one thing that the Lord has taught me is that there is no human being who is able to love Jesus on their own, like to, tr to truly love Jesus on their own. Jesus is the only one who is able to make us to love him. Just like what Jesus had said in the Bible that no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draws them to him. That is very true and that is what happens even when it comes to loving the Lord with all our hearts. None of us truly have the power or ability to love the Lord, even if we wanted to. And so what is important for us is to do our part because at the same time, although we do not have the ability to love Jesus on our own, there is no one who is just going to wake up one day and then suddenly they love the Lord with all their hearts and with everything that they have and all they want is to please Jesus and all they want is to live for him. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens out of a deliberate decision. And the deliberate decision is for us to decide that Jesus is whom we want, that we don't want the world anymore, you know, that we want to love him. And God is the one who puts that desire in us. And when we have that desire that we want, we want to love Jesus and we want to follow him, we want to obey him, you know, it means God is drawing us to himself. And if we obey that, we're going to be able to love the Lord. And so our part is to go in prayer and to seek God with all our hearts. You cannot love Jesus unless he makes you to love him. So what we're supposed to do is to go in prayer, become like a little child and humble yourself before the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you and ask the Lord to help you to love him. Everything that we want to do for the Lord, you know that there's no one who has the ability to do it. You may want to do so many things for Jesus, but unless he gives you the ability you can't that is just how dependent we are on jesus and even in the bible that's why jesus said that without him we are nothing you know like as a branch that is disconnected from a tree that that is what would become of us when we are disconnected from jesus we get our life from jesus our hunger for god comes from jesus our love for the lord it comes from him he is the one who makes us to love him. And so what we need to do is our part is to seek the Lord for him. A lot of people seek Jesus because they want him to bless them, because they want Jesus to give them a job. They want Jesus to give them money. They want Jesus to give them material wealth. They want Jesus to give them healing. They want Jesus to do all these things. And it's not wrong to seek all these things from the Lord, you know, because we are his children, he's our father, and therefore he's the source of everything we need. Even our physical needs, he wants us to come before him and ask him for the things that we need and the things that are necessary, you know. He gives us, he's our heavenly father. But at the same time, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. And, you know, the reason why God 
made it this way is very simple because Jesus said that wherever you are storing up your treasure, that's where your heart will be. And so when a person, when a person's interaction with God is solely based on asking the Lord for material things, asking the Lord for earthly things, that's your only relationship with Jesus. Every time when you pray, all you can do is, Lord, I need money. Lord, I need a house. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, I need this. Yes, you're asking from God, which is okay. But when that is the only thing that you want from the Lord, then it's a problem, you know, because your mind is meditating, you know, as you're praying, all those things that you're, that, that, that you're asking from the Lord, that is what, you know, like, your whole heart is going to be based on all those things. All you're going to want is to see all those things materializing. You know, you're storing up your treasure here on the earth because all you want from the Lord are just earthly things. But the Lord wants us more importantly than asking for physical things is to ask for the things that are eternal. You know, we need to come to the Lord and have time to pray where we're not even coming because of the earthly things that we want, but we're coming because we want to know Jesus. We're coming because we want Jesus to draw us to himself. And we're coming because we want the Lord to help us to love him. We can ask the Lord and, we, and that is the only way that we're going to love him. That is what the Lord taught me, you know, that unless we come to seek him for who he is, we need to ask the Lord, Lord Jesus, I want to give you my heart. I want to give my heart to you. I want to live for you. Help me. You know, you need to tell the Lord what you want. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to get rid of all these idols. You know, all these things. I want, I want you to take your rightful place in my heart. And I want to love you, Jesus. I want to hunger for you. I want to thirst for you. Jesus is going to make that a reality. You need to, to take those prayers even more seriously you know like a lot of people fast and pray for physical things but few people want to fast and pray for spiritual things like just to go in prayer and fasting just in order to get close to jesus it's very very important and when you do that you know god honors that he can see your heart he can see that's your desire and he's going to start drawing you to himself before you know it you're going to discover that you don't even care about earthly things you don't even care about the things of this world because god answers prayer you need to go in prayer and fasting and even ask the lord lord i'm coming before you i'm doing this prayer and fasting just because i want you to draw me near to you i want you to take out this heart that doesn't love you and give me a new heart that hungers for you, a heart that loves you. You know, you go in prayer and just seek God for who he is. And, you're, and really, you're going to start to love him. And because you love him, you're not going to want to disobey him. And you're going to obey him, not because someone told you there is hell. You're going to obey the Lord because you love him. And that is why even Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Because when you love him, automatically the thing that follows is you want to obey him. You want to do what the Lord wants. It will be a joy. It will not be a burden. You know, you, you will really, really love Jesus. But when you base your mind only on earthly things, you know, the Bible says that not a sparrow falls to the ground without your heavenly father knowing of it. And he clothes even the flowers of the fields. He feeds the wild animals. And then he says, if God can care about wild animals, if God can care about plants, you know, about flowers that are here in the morning, in the night, they're all dried up. How much more will he care for you? He made you and he created you in his image. Not only that, he even loved you enough to send his only son to die for you. So what is going to stop him from giving you everything you need? And then he says, your heavenly father knows all these things that you need. And the people of the world have their minds set on all these earthly things. 
But then Jesus says, let it not be so for you. As for you, seek first the kingdom of God. Because Satan wants you to prioritize everything you can get from Jesus. Like he wants you to use Jesus. But Jesus wants you to come and seek him just because you want to know him. You want to love him. You want to be close to him. You want to draw near to him and do not think that the Lord is going to ignore all your needs. He's going to take care of them. That is his promise. He has already promised this in his word. When you seek first God's kingdom, all other things will be added to you. But when, but what, but when you come and only seek for all these earthly blessings from the Lord, you cannot seek the Lord for who he is. You cannot fast just to get close to Jesus. You can only fast for a job. You can only fast for all these things you want to get from Jesus. Then you can't find him. And let me just give this, uh, let me just share this vision uh, the Lord gave me. So there was this time when I wanted to get close to, to the Lord, like I started to seek the Lord and then I decided to do prayer and fasting for three days, like straight, no breaking for three days, day or night. And then I remember on the second day, you know, I was really seeking the Lord with all my heart. And so on the second day in the evening, I, I was feeling hungry. And then, you know, Satan started to whisper to me saying, you know, God hears your prayers either way, whether you're fasting or not, you know, he's a good God. He can still hear you. So what's the point? Just go and eat. And then when you eat, then con continue to seek the Lord, you know. And then prayer and fasting is very important. Even Jesus did prayer and fasting. Even in the Bible, it's very encouraged, you know, because it subdues our uh, physical desires to put aside all those things that make us to care so much about our physical comfort, our physical life, to put them aside, to seek God, you know, which puts us in a better place to actually like get closer to, to the Lord because we don't have all these hindrances and distractions. And so Satan knows the power of prayer and fasting. And then he wanted me to abandon my fast and just go and eat, you know, and just you know, like he didn't want me to follow through with what I had planned and told the Lord that I wanted to do to seek him with all my heart. And then I even started having ideas of, you know, food, you know, when you're hungry, like I started to get ideas of, oh, maybe I can go and eat this. Let me go and eat this. And then when I'm done, I can just go and pray. And then right there and then I heard the voice of the Lord very clearly. And then he said to me, unless I mean more to you than that food. You're never going to find me. And then I got so shaken by what the Lord said because I knew, yes, although God can hear me when I'm eating and I pray, he can hear me. But by doing prayer and fasting, I'm honoring him, you know, which puts me in a better position to actually receive. And then Satan was trying to block me from that. He wanted me to see, to see my physical needs as being more important than what I was getting like spiritually from the Lord by being in his presence for this period that I had set aside to be for him. And then I had to ignore what Satan was saying, you know, and then I had to pray and seek the Lord with all my heart for, all, for the full period that I had planned. And then when I was done with that period, I actually, you know, the Lord answered me, I could actually tell there was a difference in how much I loved the Lord, in how much I longed for him, you know, because I started getting to a point where I, I didn't even want this earthly life anymore, you know, like I just want to be with the Lord. I want to be with Jesus. And because of that, even the things of the world began to seem empty and worthless and useless. And Jesus showed me that he is actually the only one, the source of our love for him. So if you're disconnected from the source, how can you receive? The Lord showed me a vision where I saw his heart and then there were these streaks of light that were coming from his heart and then connecting to my heart. And when this started happening and then I could feel in the spirit as though the Lord was increasing my love for him, you know, like how much I love him, how much I want him, how much I long for him. And then the Lord told me that he is 
the only, the only one who is able to make us to love him. And as that was happening, you know, I could actually tell, you know, that there, there was a difference, that change in my life. And even after that, my desire to be with the Lord, my hunger for him, my desire to stay in prayer, you know, it all changed because you're going to start wanting to be with Jesus. And then after, if you set aside time to really seek the Lord with all your heart for himself, and then after that, you still need to invest your time in your relationship with Jesus. Because after that, if you go back now, like, oh, let me go and, and be busy with the things of the world, you know, even in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to start prompting you to pray and to seek him. And then you go and be busy with the things of the world then you're not going to, you know, like you're going to go back all over and then you're going to start all over again. And so just like a physical relationship where you deliberately put in your effort, even in our relationship with Jesus, it doesn't happen by accident. We make the decision and then we ask for his help and then he helps us. And then when we reach that point, we're going to reach a point where we truly love Jesus with all our hearts and with everything that is in us you know jesus wants us to desire his presence and the reason is that it's going to make us to want to store up our treasures in heaven because we're going to look forward to that day when we're going to be with jesus and so our focus is not going to be on this earthly uh, earth it's not going to be on this earth we're not going to have our focus on the earth and the things of the world so we need to seek Jesus, have time. You can bring your request before the Lord and leave them at, your, at his feet. But it's very, very important to consistently, not just a once off thing, but consistently seek the Lord just in order to get close to him, just because you want him, just because you want him to help you. You know, everything you want, you just need to ask. Otherwise, you'll never be able to do it on your own because you're nothing without Jesus. And Jesus has made it like this for a purpose. You know, the Lord has made it like this so that we are dependent on him. We're nothing without him. Our joy comes from him. Our love for him, everything, it comes from Jesus. And so we need to humble ourselves, be like a little child and always depend on Jesus.